Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Today I'm going to be talking about Swastika Night by Murray Constantine. First and foremost, please excuse any weird rambling in this video because this is one of those rare situations where I've sat down to talk about a book in some depth without any notes or any prior planning. Usually I try to organize things a little bit, but I just randomly felt like doing a separate video on this book this morning, so here I go. <laughs> so let me start out by talking about my feelings about approaching this book in general. This was one of the um, science fiction masterwork titles written by a woman that I bought purely because it was written by a woman. I've made a point over the years of trying to read all of the SF masterwork titles by women, mainly because I make a point of reading science fiction by women in general, but also because there are so few of them in the SF masterworks line in general. I just want to know what they all are. So I bought this one and was initially very nervous because of the title. And then it sat around on my TBR for four years, I think, <laughs> because I kept trying to read it. I would reread the introduction and just go, wow, this is gonna be so depressing. I don't know if I actually want to read this right now. Like, ugh. And then I would put it down before I actually read the first chapter. I read the first chapter last year, I think, and then put it aside again. And then this year, during the Women Write Classic SFF readathon, I decided I'm just going to read it. I'm going to read it, I'm gonna get it out of the way and actually know what it is. And it has turned into a classic case of, if I had just pushed through the darn book the first time I opened it up, I would have realized that it was actually a pretty interesting read and not nearly as like painful as I thought it was going to be. Yeah. So why did I think this book was going to be painful to read? Oh, that's because it is a really harsh dystopia where um, uh, Nazi Germany wins World War II, Hitler is basically celebrated as God in a religion 700 years in the future, women are treated as cattle, they are reduced to basically just beasts, and like the whole world seems overrun with this like Nazi ethos of brutality and toxic masculinity and violence and rape towards women and all this stuff and who oh boy, you know, um, perhaps important reading but not fun reading <laughs> by any means. And you know what? It absolutely is that, but there are some really interesting elements to it and it's actually really well written. This is the thing that jumped out at me the most about this book is I just thought it was written very well. Um, and the timing of the book as well is super interesting. Um, Marie Constantine is the pen name of a woman named Catherine Burdekin. Um, I believe that she wasn't revealed as the author of this book until the 1980s, in fact. I believe that a, like, a feminist sci-fi scholar finally figured out who the real person was behind this name. Um, so I think that the book overall, Swastika Night, was pretty well known at a certain point. It was included in a like liberal book club subscription back in the 1930s or something. And that's the other interesting thing about this book, is it was published in 1937. So I believe it was probably written circa 1936. So it was written before World War II actually broke out. And this meant that Catherine Burdekin not only predicted the outbreak of World War II, which is probably not that difficult to do at that time period, she also predicted the Holocaust. And in, in this version of history, which was futuristic at the time that she wrote it, uh, you know, Hitler won and took over the world for the next 700 years. And the, you know, the Thousand Year Reich actually lasted like a thousand years. So it, it was just incredible to realize that I thought that this had maybe been written shortly after World War II, but the fact that it was written before the actual war, that was really interesting to me. So basically she's like extrapolated from the highly misogynistic aspects of the Nazi regime, as well as from that glorification of violence and, and uh, brutality and the war machine aspect of Nazi Germany. She shoved it all 700 years in the future and said, 
this is how things worked out. Um, this is what happens to people like on an individual level when their entire society revolves around violence and war and the subjugation and reduction of women. <laughs> It's not going very well, basically. So this story follows mainly one man, Alfred. Um, he is an Englishman. England, of course, has been subjugated by Germany. So he is a like super second, third, fourth class person. But um, he has come to Germany on like a religious pilgrimage to come see the, the, the famous religious sites of the Nazi religion. Um, and he um, encounters his good friend, I don't know if they were lovers or not. It sort of implied that they had a super like romantic bond almost. Um, a, a Nazi man named Hermann. And then due to circumstances, Alfred ends up becoming the bearer of this secret knowledge from a Nazi knight whose sort of aristocratic privileged family has been passing down the true knowledge of who Hitler really was and how the German Empire has actually um, changed history. So they have destroyed all evidence of prior civilizations. They have eradicated all books and media. Um, a lot of people are illiterate in the first place, but also there's nothing to read. So pretty much the history of the world or the history of the world that the German Empire controls has been destroyed, except this one family that has some of this knowledge and passes it down from son to son. And the knight has to give his knowledge to someone who will take it up and do something with it because he has no children, he has no heirs, and he chooses Alfred for reasons. A lot of this book is very talky, it's very didactic in terms of uh, today's genre speak. We would say that there's like a lot of info dumping in the dialogue. So I found that a little bit archaic, if you will. It's not always super entertaining to just read somebody giving a history lecture to somebody else most of the time, but you know, it, it mostly works here. Um, and so yeah, throughout this book, Alfred basically learns um, sort of the true history of how the, the German Nazi Empire came to be, and tangential to all of this, sort of the true nature of women, who all the men in this world think of women as literally just animals who don't really have any capacity to think or feel or anything like that. They're just kept for reproduction purposes. So one of the more painful things that Alfred goes through but doesn't really know what to do with is his realization that women are actually more than what he has thought of them as. And sort of like if he wants to accept the the knowledge about the tr about true history and everything he also has to kind of accept this knowledge about women it doesn't ultimately result in a rebellion is there this big upheaval does this 700 year old terrible brutal empire you know end no <laughs> i'm not going to spoil the end of the book for you but it's actually a very like quiet, subtle novel, and it doesn't promise momentous change. It just gives you this peek at what one person can know, what one person might be able to preserve for the future when the time is right. I admired the book's restraint. I really thought that it was going to just present some sort of ridiculous scenario for bringing this empire to its knees and changing everything, and it it doesn't get unrealistic about it, which I quite liked. I think that um, Catherine Burdekin really nailed some things about human psychology. She makes some points in this about like, basically men can't really be men because they don't have freedom of choice. Um, their honor, their intentions, their ethics don't really mean much because there's nothing behind them. They're just doing what they're told to do. They're all kind of stuck in this system. They're all automatons. Like, are you really a human being? Are you really, can you ever really achieve and be the real thing in this sort of situation? This leads me to the other thing about this book, which I personally found challenging, but is also done well, that the men central in this story, um, primarily Alfred and the knight, but also Hermann, um, they are 
good men trying to be better in a really terrible world. So they're, they're good in the sense that they're doing better than the standard, and yet their values, their ethics, what they care about, what they think, what they believe about the world is still almost reprehensible by modern terms. Um, and I think that is easiest to see in, in terms of how they think about women um, and how they talk about violence towards other people in particular. So I can't say that I was rooting for anybody except that I wanted Alfred to not lose the knowledge. I didn't want the story to end with this secret knowledge, the key to the future being lost. That's what I feared would happen the most. And I don't think that really comes to pass, but like I said before, it doesn't end with an upheaval. It doesn't end with the empire being brought to its knees and everything being restored to its original, you know, better place. It's just not what's gonna happen. So it ended up being something of an enjoyable read, um, mostly because I think that it was handled with some deftness. It was written well. And while it is talking about some pretty horrible ideas, it's with a purpose to, to make you think. So I did like that. I'm glad that I finally read it. I don't think it's the most perfect book in existence though. Like there's a quote somewhere in here that says it's basically the companion novel to 1984. I've never read 1984, but I, I wouldn't necessarily call this like essential reading in the, in the sense that we think of 1984 as an essential classic to read or whatever. Yes, I know I just said that I hadn't read an essential classic. I'll get around to it someday. So I would say this is actually probably worth reading if you are into dystopias, if you're into reading sort of the, the what if historical science fiction novels like this. Um, for me, it was okay. I suspect I won't reread it in the future, but I am glad that I actually know what it is now and that it turned out to be far more interesting and palatable than I expected it to be. That brings my rambling to some sort of conclusion, so I think I will leave it there. Uh, Swastika Night by Murray Constantine. If you have read this, if you have any thoughts you want to share about it, please leave me a comment down below because I would love to discuss it with other people who have read it. Um, what was your impression of this book? So yeah, thank you very much for watching. I'll be back to talk to you again soon. And until then, bye.